In the dark night, the sky lights up. A blaze of light with a thousand sparks. The beauty of this landscape never ceases to amaze its spectators, from the youngest to the oldest. Each detail of the universe is at the same time an inexhaustible source of magnificence and a peak of complexity. It remains of the order of the incredible. Man, a tiny particle in this vast ocean that is the universe, has always been in admiration and in search of understanding of this world that is so close to us and at the same time so far away. Dear Traveler, Good morning. Today we are going to explore the confines of the cosmos in search of the greatest mysteries of the universe. Before leaving for a new adventure, think of liking the video and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss anything. Thanks to all, and have a good trip. Even if today we know a lot about the solar system and the cosmos that surrounds us, the fact remains that when compared to all that remains to be discovered, this represents only a tiny fraction. Man is like a newborn, lost in a bassinet, much too big for him. Curled up in the corner of his bed, he finds sleep while seeking the comforting touch of his small world. Human beings just like this child are constantly touching the boundaries of the universe. Astronomy is in this sense much more than a science. It represents what links man to his origin and his very substance. The history of the universe is his history. Thus, since man became aware of himself, his gaze has been turned towards the sky. And for centuries, he has been going further and further. Today, we are going to touch this framework with our fingertips and even go beyond it. Although man has never crossed the limit of the observable universe, science allows him to see it from different angles through an excursion in the universe, we will leave to the meeting of celestial inhabitants as the Sun, the Moon, Mars, until the farthest of the observable limit. Then we will push the doors of the beyond in order to discern the theories that envisage the universe where we do not perceive it. The universe is defined as the whole of everything that exists, has existed, and will exist in the future. From a scientific point of view, the universe is apprehended as the whole of the matter and the energy distributed in the space-time. But the universe is, above all, what each of us is able to observe, an immense blue canvas drawn up above us, decorated with admirable twinkling stars, which captivate our glance and pick our curiosity since the dawn of time. The history of astronomy began in prehistoric times, when man raised his eyes to the sky. Technological advances will later allow us to see further, and scientific progress to understand the celestial world. From ancient times, men began to build monuments in order to understand the sky. The oldest site discovered to date, the Circle of Gossic, dates from 5,000 years before our era. This monument, made of three concentric circles, was discovered in August 2003. The three openings in the enclosure correspond to the rising and setting of the sun at the winter and summer solstices. This site could have been used as an astronomical observatory 
for agricultural purposes in order to allow farmers to determine the timing of their work according to the solar cycle. In 2300 BC, the Chinese named some stars. 500 years later, the Babylonians established star catalogs in which they recorded and archived their astronomical observations. In 530 BC, Pythagoras, a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher, supported the idea that the moon, sun, stars, and the five planets observable to the naked eye revolve around the Earth, which is spherical in shape. He also supported the fact that the morning and evening stars were the same star. A hundred years later, another Greek philosopher, Democritus, brought the idea that the Milky Way is made of a large number of stars. Until the Middle Ages, the discoveries follow one another. The first supernova and Halley's Comet were observed. During this period, the Greeks invented the astrolabe. This astronomical instrument of observation allows to measure the height of the stars, notably the Sun, and its direction. The first heliocentric theory was developed by the Greek mathematician and astronomer Aristarchus of Samos, based on his interpretation of the eclipses of the Moon and Sun. In the year 140, the astronomy George Ptolemy wrote the Almagest, a complete ancient work that brings together all the astronomical knowledge of the time and proposes a synthesis of the geocentric system, placing the Earth at the center of the universe. In the West, the Almagest will be used as a reference to understand the universe throughout the Middle Ages until the Copernican Revolution. In 499, the Indian astronomer Aryabhatha wrote a book entitled Aryabhathaya, in which he offers a summary of his knowledge in astronomy and mathematics. He also exposes his vision of a heliocentric world, which is explained by the Earth in rotation, turning around the Sun. In the 1000s, supernovas that remain visible for several years were observed. In 1440, the German Nicolas de Cuse published a work that went unnoticed at the time, but which nevertheless announced advanced astronomical conceptions such as those that would be brought later during the Copernican Revolution. He also tackles the subject of the infinity of the universe. In the 15th century, it is the Copernican Revolution. The Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus proposed and defended a heliocentric theory. Thus, the Earth and the other planets of the solar system revolve around the Sun. His vision radically changes the representation of the universe, hence the name revolution. The geocentric system of Ptolemy, which had been predominant until then, was gradually abandoned. Copernicus' theory revolutionized science and led to another vision of man's place in the cosmos. At the beginning of the 17th century, the astronomical telescope marked a turning point for astronomy. From then on, it was possible to observe the sky. Galileo discovered, thanks to his telescope, the phases of Venus and the four planets orbiting Jupiter. The results obtained from the observations made with the telescopic telescopes definitely put at risk the system proposed by Ptolemy in favor of the Copernican system. In 1619, the discovery of binary stars orbiting each other rekindled speculation that there were other planetary systems than ours. In 1668, Isaac Newton invented the mirror telescope. The English astronomer and physicist imagined concentrating the light with a parabolic mirror made of polished metal instead of a glass lens. 
Thus, the apparent size of the objects to be observed is increased. Newton will also be made famous thanks to numerous theories, including the theory of gravitational relativity. This fundamental interaction determines the large-scale structure of the universe. Gravitation manifests itself, among other things, in the Earth's attraction that holds us to the Earth, and in the gravity and sphericity of bodies in the cosmos. Newton's contribution to the field of astronomy is considerable, and gradually leads to a new understanding of the cosmos. This is how the Age of Enlightenment came about. With the discoveries made since the creation of optical instruments, this period will be marked by the desire of educated men to share and debate on scientific discoveries. Works of popular science were published in great numbers, making astronomy one of the most abundantly written natural sciences. Diderot and d'Alembert's encyclopedia generously depicts the heliocentric system through a set of documented writings which will contribute to make it accessible to the whole society. At the end of the 1700s, Uranus, which had been classified among the stars, then among the comets, was finally considered as a planet, the first one to be discovered thanks to the telescope. The recognition of Uranus allowed to extend the limits of the solar system, which was previously capped by Saturn. The contemporary era will still see the birth of many discoveries because of the technological progress. Astronomers discovered that stars are very distant objects and that even the closest star to the solar system named Proxima Centauri, is located at some four light years from the Earth. The advent of photography is a great step forward in the detailed observation of the cosmos. From now on, thanks to an exposure of several hours, the luminosity becomes sufficient to bring out details. The first photograph of the moon was taken in 1840. The 20th century then saw the flowering of modern astrophysical theories, many of which were formulated by Albert Einstein. In 1923, while studying the Andromeda Galaxy and its location outside our Milky Way, Edwin Hubble demonstrated the existence of other galaxies than ours. Shortly thereafter, as a result of Hubble's law, he formulated the hypothesis of the expansion of the universe, which would result in the galaxies moving away from each other on a large scale. These data will also help to understand the beginning of the universe, and especially to give it an age. The post-war period was marked by the arrival of a new approach, radio astronomy. This branch of astronomy deals with the observation of the sky by means of radio frequency. This means that instead of studying the stars and planets by their light with the help of cameras and computers, it will be the emitted waves that will be captured to be analyzed. This study requires a heavy and imposing apparatus, the radio telescope the first of which was put into service in 1971. Radio astronomy has made it possible to better understand certain fields, such as the structure of our galaxy, the physical processes of the sun, or the precision of the cosmological parameters of the universe. At the same time, space exploration, marked by a strong competition between the USSR and the United States, observed major events that would mark the progress in astronomy. Men flew and walked on the moon. But today, beyond the moon, it is the rest of the cosmos that calls man to its discovery. Through probes and space shuttles, the circle of research widens. The investigations on the constitution of the cosmic matter and the distant objects continue. 
the list of trans-Neptunian bodies beyond the Kuiper Belt is getting longer and longer, and it is now excluded that a form of life such as ours could have developed on planets known to date. The immense puzzle of understanding the universe is slowly taking shape, leading us to understand how it could have been formed one day. The majority of scientists agree today on a cosmological model to represent the origin and formation of the universe. The Big Bang is the theory according to which a giant explosion occurred between 10 and 20 billion years ago and created space, time, matter, and energy in the universe. 13.8 billion years ago, all the matter of the universe appeared in a single point during this intense explosion. The matter then developed at a crazy pace and at an incredibly high temperature, doubling in size and creating space every 10 to 34 seconds. The energy, then transformed into particles of matter and antimatter, is for the most part destroyed except for a tiny part in which protons and neutrons can develop. In a few minutes, they fuse and form hydrogen and helium nuclei. 300,000 years later, these nuclei capture electrons to form atoms. The universe is then filled with clouds of hydrogen and helium. The photons now move freely. This marks the beginning of the transparent universe. The universe will continue to evolve. The balls of gas that are the stars will be formed, then the planets that revolve around the sun, and finally the Earth. A constant evolution that will lead to the universe as we know it today. The Big Bang Theory was scientifically supported by the notion of expansion of the universe. In cosmology, the expansion of the universe is defined by the distance of galaxies from each other. This separation is not translated by a movement, nor by an increase in the size of the stellar objects, but by a swelling of the universe. Thus, the objects are led to move away from each other. It is during the 20th century that the discovery of the expansion of the universe was made in several stages. At that time, many bodies could be observed through a telescope. All were considered nebulae, clusters of gas and interstellar dust, but they also included galaxies. The nature and distance of these nebulae questioned the scientific community. In 1914, Vesto Slipher, an American astronomy, noticed that these famous nebulae had a tendency to move away from the Earth. From the speed measurements of these nebulae, the scientists concluded that they should not belong to the Milky Way, since their rapid movement did not seem to be related to gravity. It was then necessary to determine a method to calculate the distance at which these objects were. In 1920, the great debate was set up. These scientific meetings aimed to define the nature and distance of nebulae, which finally proved to be galaxies. The most famous date of this debate took place on April 26th. Harlow Shapley and Heber Curtis opposed each other on the extragalactic character, or not, of nebulae, based in particular on the Andromeda Galaxy. The first man defended the idea that the observable universe did not extend beyond the Milky Way, and the second man defended the opposite idea. The debate, enriched by the discoveries made by Vesto Slipher a few years earlier, did not reach a definitive conclusion. Five years later, the controversy was closed by the intervention of Edwin Hubble, an American astronomer who made great advances in the understanding of the nature of the universe.
he was able to observe, through the Hooker telescope, Cepheids and several variable stars, and was able to calculate their distance, thus proving the extragalactic nature of these objects. After several years of observation, Hubble demonstrated a link between the speed of recession and the distance of certain galaxies, thus proving the expansion of the universe. In 1927, a Belgian astronomer and physicist named Georges Lemaire defined a model of the universe according to which the galaxies seem to move away with a speed proportional to their distance due to an expansion. All these discoveries, combined with the development of general relativity by Einstein, are proof of the expansion of the universe and the Big Bang. The expansion of the universe is manifested by an apparent distance of distant celestial objects. Nevertheless, the displacement of the position of bodies is too slow on a human scale for us to see. Scientists have therefore agreed on the observation of the redshift phenomenon. The wavelength of the light emitted by galaxies, called spectrum, will increase due to the expansion and therefore shift towards the red. Thus, in an expanding universe, the higher the red shift, the more distant the galaxies are. It is easier to imagine the phenomenon of expansion of the universe with the image of an elastic web. Two schemes are then possible. On this canvas are at first drawn circles. When we pull on the canvas it grows, and the circles drawn see their size grow too. In a second step, we will glue rigid circles on the same canvas. When we pull on the canvas, it grows. The rigid objects move away from each other, but their size does not change. This last phenomenon occurs during the expansion of the universe. As a consequence of the laws of general relativity, the universe is subject to forces imposed by different forms of matter, and it cannot therefore remain static. However, in 1998, a new discovery shook the scientific community. Not only is the universe expanding, but this expansion would be constantly accelerating. While the initial theory of the Big Bang predicted a slowing of the expansion, the study of the history of the universe has, conversely, demonstrated an acceleration of its expansion. The most plausible interpretation involves dark energy, the hypothetical energy that would fill the entire universe and that would function in an atypical way as a repulsive gravitational force due to its negative pressure. This discovery calls into question the previous fates that had been imagined for the universe. Lurking on our planet, the universe that surrounds us seems distant and infinite. And yet, it is now accessible to us thanks to the progress of science and the explorations which could be carried out in space. A detailed description of the universe is now possible, at least to the limit of the observable. The planetary system in which we evolve is the solar system. It is part of the Milky Way galaxy and is located in the Orion Arm, a star-forming region. The solar system consists of a star, the Sun, and various celestial objects orbiting it. Among them are eight planets with their several hundred known satellites, five dwarf planets, and billions of small objects. For most of history, man did not know the concept of planetary system. For him, the Earth is immobile at the center of the universe and unique in its kind. Later, in order to explain the alternation of day and night, scientists will think that the sun revolves around the Earth. The planets closest to the Earth 
Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn have been known since prehistoric times, as men could observe them with the naked eye. From the 17th century, thanks to the telescope, astronomers could finally observe the solar system as such. Galileo was among the first to observe details of other objects, such as the craters of the moon, through his telescope. These groundbreaking observations legitimize the idea of the heliocentric model advanced by Nicholas Copernicus. Physics, astronomy, and cosmology will allow great advances and will allow to better understand the solar system. In 1755, a hypothesis put forward by Immanuel Kant and Pierre Simon de Laplace explains that the solar system was formed from the solar nebula, a cloud of gas 4.6 billion years ago. To imagine the solar system concretely, let us imagine first the star, the sun, burning as a starting point. Central star of our planetary system, it is around the sun that orbit the eight planets, five dwarf planets, and the millions of asteroids that we know today. Composed of 75% hydrogen and 25% helium, the sun is the heaviest object in the solar system representing 99.8% of its total mass. Because of its composition and the extreme conditions that prevail in its heart, this star is perfectly similar to a fireball as defined so well by Anaxagoras of Clausomenes, a Greek philosopher of the middle of the 5th century BC. The sun was formed 4.6 billion years ago. According to the Solar Nebula Hypothesis, a gigantic molecular cloud rotating on itself would have been disrupted by the explosion of a massive supernova. Small clusters, usually in rotation, would have collapsed, giving birth to a disk of gas inside which stars have taken shape. Within this nursery of stars, our Sun appeared. The Sun is at the half of its life. When all its reserves of hydrogen will have been consumed, it will irremediably change its structure and will enter the phase of red giant. Becoming larger, it will absorb Mercury, Venus, and the Earth. The temperature at its surface will decrease and its color will gradually turn red. In lack of hydrogen, its nuclear process will continue with the helium that is accumulated in its core for billions of years. Over time, it will become a white dwarf until it cools down completely and becomes extinct several billion years later. It is in the form of light that the sun brings us the energy necessary to maintain our planet and simultaneously life. Without the sun, the earth would cool to minus 270 degrees, or almost minus 454 degrees Fahrenheit. Our entire atmosphere would form a layer of ice on the surface of the planet, and it would be impossible for us to breathe. The sun also has the role of maintaining the Earth in orbit, which without its star would rise in the universe and could well collide with other stellar objects. Closest to the Sun is Mercury. Mercury is difficult to observe because of its proximity to the Sun. It is very hot, up to 430 degrees or 806 degrees Fahrenheit on its sunny side, but the temperature can drop to minus 180 degrees or 356 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade. Venus comes next and is known as the brightest star in our solar system after the Sun and the Moon. It is commonly called the Shepherd Star. The heat is intense and the volcanic activity very present. This planet has long been considered the most similar to Earth because their chemical composition and density are close and they are about the same size. 
Now we leave Venus to arrive at our dear planet Earth, the one that shelters the man and that allowed the appearance and the evolution of the life. The age of the Earth is estimated at 4.54 billion years. Its surface, relatively young, is broken down into different tectonic plates. The Earth's atmosphere is composed mainly of nitrogen and oxygen, with some traces of less abundant gases, such as argon and carbon dioxide. Today, it is the only known planet in the universe that has met the optimal conditions for the appearance of life, living beings, and a form of intelligence. Its only satellite, the Moon, orbits at about 300,000 kilometers, or about 186,000 miles. Let's linger for a moment on the Moon which we already observe so well without the need for any optical instrument. A natural satellite is defined as a star that orbits another object larger than itself, a planet or a dwarf planet. Satellites can be formed at the same time as the planet around which they orbit, or they can be captured by the latter, or they can be created by a collision between a star and the planet. The predominant hypothesis to explain the formation of the Moon is that of a giant impact. A collision between Theia, a protoplanet similar to Mars, and the proto-Earth would have dislocated and projected a large amount of debris around the Earth. The agglomeration of part of this debris would have formed the Moon in about a century. The Moon is now a satellite that we know rather well since it has been the destination of many space explorations. Only three days of travel are necessary from the Earth to reach it. The interest of its exploration was motivated by the space race between 1957 and 1975. In the midst of the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union engaged in a frantic competition with the objective of conquering the Moon. Thus, a first flight over the Moon will be realized in 1959. Then, ten years later, the first man will put a foot on its surface. Today, analyzed by more than a hundred robots and visited by twelve humans, man is beginning to get to know it. The Moon is one-third the size of our planet and represents a little more than 1% of its mass. On its surface, we can observe great differences in temperature. Some of its craters permanently immersed in shadow can reach minus 248 degrees or minus 414 degrees Fahrenheit, while in other places, the temperature rises to 123 degrees or over 253 degrees Fahrenheit. The surface of the Moon is covered with craters, comet and asteroid debris, meteorite impacts and dust. The most considerable reliefs can even be observed with the naked eye or with binoculars. Some darker parts are called black seas, but they are not really seas but impact craters in which lava would have flowed. Many volcanoes cover its surface, and although they were certainly active in the past, they are now all dormant. The atmosphere of the Moon, the exosphere, does not allow humans to breathe. It rotates on itself and revolves around the Earth. It also observes phases of day and night, but these last much longer since a day and night on the Moon are equivalent to 15 Earth days each. Despite the sleep of its volcanic activity, the Moon is, geologically speaking, not dead, since tremors have been recorded. If the Moon was not there, the rotation of the Earth would be disturbed and the climate completely destabilized. The tides would also be weaker and the nights darker which would have considerable consequences on the balance of life. In the short and medium term, 
the consequences of a life without the moon would be unfortunate, but not disastrous. However, in the long term, it is the habitability of the Earth that would be entirely questioned. Mars, a planet known since prehistoric times, is the fourth and last telluric planet located 227 million kilometers, or 140 million miles from the Sun. Its nickname of Red Planet was conferred to him because, visible with the naked eye, one can allot to him a light red color orange. The recent explorations have confirmed that this color was the consequence of the oxidation of iron minerals in its soil. Its atmosphere is composed of gas, nitrogen, and argon, and its pressure on the ground is a thousand times lower than on Earth. It has a complex and varied landscape with volcanoes 20 kilometers or 12 miles high and 400 kilometers or 250 miles in diameter. It shelters besides Olympus Mons, the highest mountain of the solar system, 22 kilometers or 14 miles high and 648 kilometers wide, that is to say almost 400 miles, there is also on its surface a huge fault, Vias Marineris, which extends over 2,500 kilometers, or 1,550 miles. Water would have once flowed on Mars since, on some photographs, it seems that there are, like riverbeds and their tributaries. Mars is mostly made of rock and metal. Its average temperature is around minus 63 degrees, or minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Slightly inclined on its axis, Mars is subject to the seasons. During its very hot summers, it will reach 30 degrees or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, but its low temperatures will be minus 140 degrees or minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes it a cold planet even if it is possible that in the past it was warmer and wetter and had reservoirs of liquid water. Despite the discrete presence of clouds, there is no precipitation. Its surface resembles a great cold desert with a landscape composed of ice caps, volcanoes, and canyons. Some areas are reminiscent of the past presence of lakes. The air is not breathable for the man because of the too weak presence of oxygen in its atmosphere. This is one of the difficulties of the space missions envisaged on Mars, since they would require a system to supply a whole crew with oxygen during a long period. Perseverance has, in this sense, made a great advance, since it has succeeded in producing oxygen from the carbon dioxide present on the Red Planet. Mars is now at the heart of space exploration projects. The main reason? Its relative resemblance to Earth and its proximity. This planet seems to be a territory to colonize, and why not to settle there? Its rotation period and its size are quite similar to that of the Earth. Mars is indeed 1.9 times smaller than our planet. Scientists consider that 3.5 billion years ago, Mars would have had conditions favorable to the appearance and evolution of life. Before it underwent a violent climate change, Mars was warmer than today, and its atmosphere was thicker. It is also the explanation of this brutal change that questions man. How did a planet that was favorable to life become so hostile? The duration of the journey between Mars and Earth depends on their position and orbit, but it could be at most 260 days, or more than 8 months. Orbiting rovers and space probes are surveying the planet to discover more and more, until perhaps one day the first manned mission can be realized. Before reaching the next planet, Jupiter, there is an asteroid belt. 
Remnants of the formation of the terrestrial planets from the size of a speck of dust to a body of a few hundred kilometers, these billions of rocky orbits, all distinct from each other, are arranged in an arc between Mars and Jupiter. Beyond this belt, the four planets present are defined as gaseous. These planets do not have solid surfaces since they are composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. They are much larger than the terrestrial planets and represent 99% of the mass in orbit around the Sun. We are now landing on the planet Jupiter, the fourth brightest object in the sky, after the Sun, the Moon, and Venus. It is the largest of all the planets. Distant on average 778 million kilometers or 480 million miles from the Sun, it takes 43 minutes for light from the star to reach it. Mainly made of gas and liquid in motion, the conditions seem particularly unfavorable to the development of any type of living organism. Not far from Jupiter stands the second largest planet in the solar system, Saturn. Made famous in part by its icy and rocky rings, this gaseous planet is a favorite of scientists. Located at an average of 1.43 billion kilometers from the Sun, or almost 900 million miles from the Sun, it receives its light in 1 hour and 19 minutes. Traveling to Saturn is possible in the long, or even very long term. Indeed, the Cassini-Huygens mission, led by NASA, was able to place a probe in orbit around Saturn after 2,664 days of travel, or seven years. Saturn is nine times larger than the Earth, but has a lower density than water. In practical terms, if Saturn were immersed in a huge bathtub filled with water, it would float. Also observable with the naked eye, it has been discovered and observed since ancient times. Like Jupiter, its body is essentially composed of gas and liquid, which makes it impractical for any concrete exploration. The space probe of the Cassini-Huygens mission paid the price by fatally ending its journey to dive into Saturn's atmosphere. The farther a planet is from the Sun, the colder it is, and Saturn is no exception, with an average temperature of minus 140 degrees or minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go back to its spectacular rings which make it extraordinary compared to the other planets of the solar system. The planetary rings. Several planets have planetary rings, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, but it is those of Saturn which were discovered first and which remain the most consequent. In 1610, Galileo, observing Saturn for the first time, defined it as a planet with two satellites. Two years later, with an improvement of his observation tools, he will qualify this time the rings as two half ellipses. Four decades later, Christian Huygens, astronomer and physicist, described the star surrounded, not by satellites, but by rings. Until the end of the 19th century, the discoveries follow one another to lead to the existence of several rings made of small particles. The presence of rings around other planets is quite recent, since those of Uranus were confirmed in 1977, those of Jupiter in 1979, and those of Neptune in 1984. We know that planetary rings are mostly made of dust and small particles that take a flat ring shape and surround a planet, a dwarf planet, a small body, or even a natural satellite. Hypotheses on the origin of the formation of planetary rings are formulated, but none is yet approved. As far as Saturn's rings are concerned, they would have formed from bodies from the Kuiper belt, essentially broken up by the planet's attractive forces. Saturn has seven main rings, 
a very large outer ring, called the Phoebe ring, and a multitude of rings. The Phoebe ring has a diameter of 12 million kilometers. If it were visible to the naked eye, its size would be equal to that of twice a full moon. Saturn's rings reflect 60% of the sun's light. A 2018 study found that Saturn's rings will have disappeared by 292 million years and that they must have been even more grandiose in their origin. Now let's move on to Uranus and Neptune. Virtually invisible to the naked eye because it has only a very faint glow, Uranus has only been discovered in modern times. It is considered, with Neptune, as a giant ice planet because it is composed of volatiles such as water, methane, and ammonia, materials called ice in astrophysics, whatever their state. While most planets move like spinning tops, Uranus seems to roll on its orbit. This is due to its rotation axis, which is inclined by 80% with respect to its orbit, a particularity which must have been forged since the formation of the solar system. Its neighbor, 1,627 million kilometers or 1 billion kilometers further, Neptune, the second icy giant planet, was discovered thanks to mathematical calculations. The mathematician Jean-Joseph Urbain Laverriere deduced its existence while trying to understand the anomalies of motion observed on Uranus. The composition of Neptune is close to that of Uranus. It owes its blue color to the absorption of red light by the methane in its atmosphere. Neptune is four times larger than the Earth and 17 times heavier. Neptune's winds, the fastest in the solar system, can reach speeds of over 2,000 kilometers per hour, or 1,200 miles per hour. But then where does the solar system end? Scientists define the limit of the solar system when the solar wind of the sun, plasma flow made of ions and electrons, is stopped by the interstellar medium. In astronomy, this phenomenon is called the heliopause. Data collected by Voyager 1 would have indicated that interstellar space would have been reached at a distance of 19 billion kilometers from Earth, or almost 12 billion miles from Earth. However, the adventure continues after the solar system. Astronomers are now able to observe objects further and further into space. Thanks to the most advanced telescopes, stars that have traveled for tens of billions of years have been discovered. This is the case of the galaxy GNZ11 and the star Icarus. At the end of the observable universe, a small galaxy is shining. A small group of stars named GNZ11, located in the constellation of the Big Dipper, is since March 2016 the most distant and oldest observed galaxy. Its unusual name is a derivation of its location. This galaxy was formed 13.4 billion years ago. This is almost 97% of the time of existence of the universe. This does not mean that the galaxy is so many light years away from us. Since the universe extends, it is therefore well beyond. Scientists estimate its position to be around 32 billion light years. It is through the eye of the Hubble Space Telescope that the encounter could take place. The galaxy GNZ11 is 25 times smaller than our Milky Way galaxy with a mass 100 times lower. Its high luminosity is explained by its important star formation. Indeed, it generates stars much faster than our galaxy. These very hot and massive stars are reminiscent of the stars that remained 
at the beginning of the universe. Icarus is the name given to the most distant star ever observed. Much larger and brighter than our sun, it took nine billion years for its light to reach the Earth. It appeared to us when the universe was at 30% of its age. The discovery was also made possible by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2018. While scientists were observing a distant supernova, they discovered a light source that had appeared increasingly bright between 2013 and 2016. The Icarus star owes its discovery to the phenomenon of gravitational lensing. A cluster of galaxies located between the observer and the light source has given rise to an amplification of the faint glow of the star. This cluster, located 5 billion light years from Earth, increased the brightness of Icarus by up to 2,000 times, making it visible through a telescope. The star, located at 9 billion light years, holds the new record of the most distant star ever observed to date. Thanks to their observations, astrophysicists now know a little more about this star. Icarus is a blue giant, which defines a very hot, bright, and especially very massive star of blue color. It is about 16 times the mass of the Sun, and has a short lifespan. It is the first time that the gravitational lens allows to observe an isolated star. This opens up real prospects for the study of the distant universe. Icarus will now serve as a reference point for astronomers to study the evolution of stars and the nature of the first generations of stars. Thanks to this discovery, they are also seeking to verify hypotheses concerning dark matter, the elusive matter of which the universe is largely composed. Indeed, by differentiating the bursts due to stars from those due to massive bodies, the researchers would be able to develop hypotheses on the composition of this still very mysterious matter. After having reached the limit of the observable universe, let us now enter the mysterious world of theories about the unobservable universe. Beyond all that the light returns to us, and of which the man has knowledge, a question remains. Is the universe finished? Does it have a limit? If man had the ability to walk to infinity, would he one day find himself facing a wall? The notion of infinity intervenes as soon as we try to qualify something that has no limit, no boundary, either in its number or in its size. As well approached in mathematics as in philosophy, in metaphysics, or even in theology, infinity has strongly marked history, implying at each discovery a radical evolution of perspectives. While man, a limited and finite being, evolves on a planet which is also limited and finite, he realizes that the universe in which he evolves seems infinitely large. But how can we talk about infinity in the physical reality of nature. At the present time, no scientific data allows us to affirm in an absolute way if the universe is finite or infinite. Only theories are there to try to project a description of the universe in order to understand its history, its function, and possibly its future. The finite or infinite character of the universe is intimately linked to its geometry. Presumably, in the hypothesis of a closed universe, it would have the shape of a sphere. This geometry implies a finite space, but without end. In the same way, we could walk without stopping around the Earth, which is also spherical. A closed universe would imply that it has an edge, a border, 
and the universe would then have enough mass for the expansion to stop one day. The universe could also be flat, without limit, implying an expansion to infinity. And the third form, the most accepted by the scientific community today, would seem to go in the direction of a large-scale flat universe. The study of the cosmological background has not observed any repetition but anomalies which would imply that the universe, although flat, has a complex or crumpled shape. The idea of a flat universe is compatible with the notion of an infinite universe. One need only observe the sky with the naked eye to confront the boundless immensity of space. But with the help of advances in technology and science, how far can man make his way into the stars? When scientists look far into space, it is as if they are looking far into the past, since the speed of light is not infinite. The association of the finite speed of light with the finite age of the universe determines an impassable limit beyond which nothing is visible to man. It is the cosmological horizon. Light needs time to reach us, but the universe being 13.8 billion years old, the possible travel time is therefore not infinite. This means that a galaxy 18 billion light years away is beyond our cosmological horizon. Just as the ocean continues beyond what is seen by sailors observing the horizon from the lookout of a ship, the universe exists beyond the cosmological horizon. We simply do not see it, hence its name of invisible or unobservable universe. The position of the cosmological horizon is closely related to the expansion of the universe. Indeed, a photon emitted by an object located 13.8 billion light years away from the Earth could be perceived if the universe did not move. However, because of the expansion of the universe, the object in question, having emitted the photon, moved away during the duration of the journey of its light. It will eventually be located more than 13.8 billion light years from us. This is how objects gradually disappear from our cosmological field of vision. Like marks on the surface of an inflated balloon, the bodies that make up the universe are moving away from each other until they pass the border of the cosmological horizon and disappear from our view. Their light does not reach us anymore because they move away from us too quickly. Engulfed in the unobservable universe, the following becomes a captivating and fascinating subject of study and research since it is not because they are invisible that they no longer exist. But what do they contain in this invisible part of the universe? Before we knew that eight planets were orbiting the Sun, we thought there was only the Earth. Before we knew that the Milky Way had hundreds of billions of suns, we thought it was unique. Before discovering that the observable universe had several billion galaxies, we thought that the Milky Way was the only one. While it is now impossible for humans to visit the limits of the observable universe, many scientists are developing theories about what might be beyond. Among them, the existence of a multitude of universes, more commonly called multiverse, is gaining momentum. The multiverse designates the set of all possible universes and consequently supposes that beyond the observable universe there could be other universes. Space and time would then no longer be our only reality. The concept of multiverse is frequently used in movies under the name of multiple universes. The idea of multiverse is not recent. It was for the first time evoked by Anaximander 
a Greek philosopher and scientist in the 6th century BC. It is through the concept of a para, which literally means unlimited, that Anaximander thinks of an abundance of successive, infinite worlds that are born and formed. Centuries later, in 1584, Giordano Bruno, a famous Neapolitan philosopher, drew up a portrait of an infinite universe with no center, made up of a multitude of worlds, each centered on its own star and which would only be visible and accessible to their own inhabitants in his work, The Infinite, The Universe, and The Worlds. At the beginning of the 18th century, thought was influenced by religion. The philosopher Leibniz developed a theory of several possible worlds created by God, among which he would have chosen the best one, ours. Scientific research will then take over, and three centuries later, Hugh Everett will develop the theory of multiple worlds. The latter assumes that our universe coexists with many others that are permanently separated into different universes and inaccessible to each other. In 2014, Max Tegmark, a Swedish cosmologist, published his book, Our Mathematical Universe, through which he exposes a theory of everything, whose hypothesis is that every mathematical object has a physical existence. Max Tegmark elaborated a classification of multiverse in different levels, of which ours would be a tiny part. The Level 1 Multiverse, a copy of our world beyond the cosmic horizon. The first level of multiverse comes from Einstein's theory of general relativity. The idea of general relativity describes the influence of the presence of matter on the activity of stars. Einstein assumes a flat and infinite universe, but the speed of light being finite, we can observe only a part of the cosmos. Therefore, beyond the cosmic horizon, this theory suggests that other worlds exist, worlds subject to the same physical laws as ours, versions of universes exactly identical to ours, even with respect to its inhabitants. This theory suggests that beyond the cosmic horizon, another you would be on the Earth of another universe at this very moment, watching this same video. Is there a chance that you could one day meet this double? No, it is unlikely that such a face-to-face -face meeting would take place, since this double in question is located several billion kilometers away from you. This theory translates the easiest and most popular cosmological model, namely, an uncurved and unbounded space involving a regular distribution of matter. The Level 2 Multiverse Cosmic Inflation and Bubbles This theory is the most accepted by the scientific community since it is the closest to the description we have today of the birth of our universe. In this model of the multiverse, called Cosmic Inflation, space would have undergone a very rapid phase of accelerated expansion at the very beginning of the existence of the observable universe. This expansion of space then stopped, forming the universe in which we live, but it continued elsewhere, leaving behind other spaces similar to our universe governed by different physical laws. The universe would then have the shape of a multitude of bubbles connected between them and emerging following inflationary phases if a bubble universe were to retract and die, others would be created subject to different laws. This is the principle of eternal inflation. The multiverse that appears under cosmic inflation supposes that each universe that is formed has its own laws. There would thus be a multitude of realities, whether livable or hostile. 
some scientists link this model of eternal inflation to the string theory. This combination leads to a model of multiverse, particularly rich and fertile. The universes thus formed would each have an independent physical structure, giving rise to a diversity of laws and facts. Thus, perhaps the you of the other Earth of the other universe is not watching this video, but rather is walking in the mountains. The Level 3 Multiverse Multiple Worlds or Parallel Universes This type of multiverse is the most known to the general public because it is the one that inspires science fiction movies about parallel universes. It is based on the rival theory of the string theory, namely quantum gravity. According to this model, the center of black holes scattered in the universe would be the object of an astonishing phenomenon that reverses the direction of gravity. The black hole is defined by a deep hollow through which light cannot pass. This hole in space-time is formed when a star collapses below the Schwarzschild radius, which implies that all photons have elliptical trajectories and can therefore not escape. The dominant scheme of cosmology predicts that matter collapses on itself. But surprisingly, when it gets trapped in the center of black holes, it contracts only to bounce back and spread again. The looping quantum gravity then describes a combined multiverse in which each black hole gives birth to a new universe. As in the level two multiverse model, this massive appearance of new universes would lead to quantum fluctuations that could alter the laws and physical constants. The Level 4 Multiverse Governed by different mathematical structures This last level listed by Max Tegmark gathers parallel universes governed by other mathematical structures that we can admit but that we do not observe as physical realities in our universe. They are not only different manifestations of fundamental rules, but the rules themselves are fundamentally distinct. Max Tegmark was not the only one to project himself into the unobservable universe. Hugh Everett is an American physicist and mathematician born in 1930. Also called the Everett Interpretation, he became famous for his many worlds theory. While a normal system evolves deterministically and is not difficult to measure, the quantum system will also evolve deterministically, but its measurement will give random results. This problem is called the quantum measurement problem. Everett's interpretation is that universes divide, Therefore, what is not true here will be true in another universe. Our world would thus be only the result of probabilities at the level of elementary particles. Let's imagine for a moment the probabilities of a coin toss game, like heads or tails. A coin is thrown in the air. At that moment, both heads and tails have the same chance. If it lands on heads, it means that the probability of it landing on tails has failed. In another world, the coin lands on tails, and at the same time, the two worlds separate. Everett's interpretation is based on the principle of action and reaction. Another physicist who has worked to develop theories in favor of the existence of parallel universes is Andre Lind. This 74-year-old Russian scientist has, in 1982, under the influence of various works concerning cosmic inflation, proposed the phenomenon of eternal inflation. Thus, this cosmic inflation would stop in some areas of the universe and would continue in others. When inflation ends, the zones would close again in the form of a sphere thus giving rise to universe bubbles. 
The characteristic of the multiverse is that they never meet. When inflation stops, a new universe appears. Nevertheless, around each universe, inflation continues, and the expansion continues, thus moving away from each other at a speed much faster than the speed of internal expansion of the universes. The universes are like air bubbles in water, that is, expanding much faster than the bubbles themselves are expanding. So the bubbles will never meet, and neither will the different universes. Despite all the research and plausible theories of the existence of multiple universes, the chance of ever being able to observe, measure, and visit a parallel world are almost zero. A week before his death, Stephen Hawking attempted to demonstrate the existence of multiverses in an article, A Smooth Exit from Eternal Inflation. Written in collaboration with Thomas Hertog, a Belgian cosmologist, the two scientists reveal their thoughts on the nature of the universe and the theory of multiverse by questioning eternal inflation and suggesting a less complex hypothesis. For the two scientists, the multiverse would be a set of more manageable universes that all look alike. Moreover, according to them, if other universes appeared at the same time as ours, at the time of the Big Bang, they must have left traces. This is how Hawking and Hertog develop mathematical formulas in order to detect possible radiation from other universes. The work of the two scientists aimed to transform the idea of a multiverse into a scientific framework that could be experimented. Have traces of other universes been discovered since then? No. A false alarm was sounded in 2020, when NASA thought it had found a parallel universe, but it was actually anomalies in some data. According to some physicists, some particles, neutrons, would be allowed to pass from a parallel universe to ours, thus playing the gatekeeper. The theory of mirror universes implies the existence of a parallel world, which would be almost identical to ours in terms of force and particles, although neither of them can come into contact. However, it turns out that some particles, more precisely neutrons, could pass from one universe to another in the form of oscillations. The idea of another world inspires authors who transmit their visions to us through numerous books, films, comics, and science fiction series. Nevertheless, the reality of what the world beyond the cosmological horizon would look like still remains a mystery.